Good morning. It's a very great pleasure to be here and having a wonderful speakers. So we can really send the information and the share information very easily at the bits. But how to really bring that power to the real world, the world of the atoms, moving the atoms, materials, people, helping, rescuing, is a very complex task. Nothing really close in the cyberspace or digital world. Today, I'd like to discuss how to bring the information in the cyberspace, in the real world, how to really make logistics work, and how to really make things be solved. So first, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Watanabe-san. He's a uh, uh, head of the public policy in Japan, used to be. Uh, and also, he's now Amazon Japan, sorry, head of public policy in Japan, Amazon Japan corporations. And he has a lot of experience, how to really connect the needs and also supply to help people. Also, Sam Johnson's, come, yeah, please. Sam Johnson's is the founders of the Student Volunteer Force. It's also known as the Student Volunteer Armies, having a very unique experience coordinating, connecting the power of the students into the real uh, contributions. Then, Yorimasa Tanaka, Tanaka-san is working for the very famous uh, transportation company called Yamato Transport. He's a general manager of the division of information systems. Also, he will going to share the very precious experiences of moving real stuff in a very complex, chaotic, physical world using uh, information and also digital technology. So first, I'd like to ask each of our speaker to give us, say, five minutes uh, presentations. Then we'd like to start discussions, then open the floor, us. then finishing everything in 40 minutes. So five minutes. Okay. So uh, today, uh, I want to sh uh, share with you uh, our unique experience uh, regarding uh, Amazon wishlist. Um, so wishlist is uh, usually used for uh, gifting uh, for uh, some uh, birthday or a wedding or a baby birth, something. Uh, but uh, at this time, uh, we used uh, wish list tools uh, for uh, affecting people uh, in talk area. So <clears throat> the idea is uh, in people in evacuation center uh, post uh, wish list, uh, the item, uh, they, uh, whatever you want, uh, they post uh, specific items, and they can control uh, the amount or number of uh, items. And then uh, Amazon uh, COJP customer in JP, uh, just one click uh, to purchase or, or help. And, and then uh, the stuff uh, will be delivered uh, directly uh, to the uh, uh, specific uh, evacuation center. This is the uh, direct support uh, system uh, idea uh, between uh, supporters and the uh, affected people. Uh, but uh, in the last March, uh, the, uh, we have, uh, we are very uh, struggling, so, uh, how or who can uh, make a uh, wish list uh, in Tohoku area uh, under the unusual uh, situation? Uh, so no uh, internet access or uh, lack of uh, literacy and, and so on. So uh, uh, and uh, and but but uh, and also uh, we have uh, difficulties uh, for transportation. Uh, in March, uh, uh, transportation system uh, didn't work uh, 100%. Uh, we and uh, uh, Yamato-san uh, are uh, uh, very hard work uh, to uh, recover the uh, transportation, transportation system. Uh, but in, in March, I mean last March, uh, we couldn't uh, deliver the items uh, to all uh, evacuation center. But uh, in last uh, April, uh, so Yamato-san, uh, uh, very hard work. Uh, and then, so they could uh, deliver uh, staffs uh, to all evacuation centers in Tohoku area. So uh, in last uh, March, and this is the, uh, uh, the Twitter's uh, uh, message. Uh, first one is my uh, Twitter private icon, uh, but uh, <clears throat> last uh, March 7th, 
uh, Amazon COJP uh, could start uh, to deliver uh, stuff to only uh, all evacuation center in Tohoku area. So, and then uh, clever uh, Amazon customers uh, come up with idea. So, <clears throat> if Amazon uh, can deliver uh, stuff to uh, evacuation center, so why don't you use the wish list uh, to uh, each evacuation center uh, for affected people? So, and then uh, this is uh, Mary retweet and, uh, and the someone uh, mentioned uh, our uh, Japan's uh, customer uh, country manager to why don't you uh, uh, launch uh, wish list program uh, for affected people? So, and then so our country manager, so we are working uh, for, uh, on it and thank you for uh, message. But uh, uh, at this time, so uh, I'm very uh, uh, struggling. So, uh, which, uh, or which information uh, is reliable uh, for the uh, uh, wish list program? Because they, uh, uh, at that time, we, I can see there are many tweet, tweet message or a blog post uh, or message feed in Facebook or something. But uh, uh, <coughs> which information is exact uh, or accurate information at that time? So, uh, and then, uh, but luckily, uh, I could find out uh, a information uh, provided uh, from the uh, Rikuzen Takada in Iwate Prefecture. So this is the uh, first uh, wish list uh, we created for uh, Rikuzen Takada uh, Fire Corps. Uh, fire Corps is the volunteer groups. Uh, and uh, at that time, uh, I could reach by cell phone uh, a leader of uh, Fire Corps of Rikuzen Takada. Uh, he's uh, uh, Mr. Osaka-san. Uh, actually, uh, he lost uh, his family uh, under this uh, uh, disaster, but uh, he has very strong leadership and uh, to help uh, neighboring uh, affected people. And uh, so I could reach by cell phone, and uh, he said to me, uh, I really want to a bathroom uh, for uh, evacuation uh, centers, people, uh, because the, so this is the uh, last April. So uh, just um, after the, uh, nearly uh, one month uh, after the uh, disaster, so nobody uh, took a bath uh, in Rikuzen Takata. So uh, he really need uh, some uh, so carpenter's tools uh, or something uh, to make a, a bathroom uh, for uh, Rikuzen Takata people. So uh, I, so usually wish list uh, is uh, made by uh, sales services uh, in, in, in uh, Amazon customers. But this is the uh, emergency case, so that's why I, uh, uh, I uh, have uh, necessary staff's items uh, from Osaka-san by telephone, and then I myself uh, made a, a wish list uh, for the Rikuzen Takata people. So more than 100 staffs, uh, and then uh, I posted uh, Amazon COJP website, and then uh, I and the country manager uh, tweeted, uh, we created a first wish list uh, for Rikuzen Takata. And then uh, I had a very amazing experience uh, in few seconds, uh, I think uh, less than uh, one minute, uh, all items uh, have uh, purchased uh, by uh, Amazon uh, customers, uh, more than uh, 100 items, uh, very surprised. So, <clears throat> and then, so Yamato-san uh, can deliver uh, to the, uh, kindly deliver to the uh, uh, Rikuzen Takata uh, fire station. Uh, Yamato-san, uh, could deliver to the uh, staffs to only uh, evacuation center. So fire station is not an uh, evacuation center, but uh, Yamato-san uh, find out a uh, route uh, to uh, 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 Rikuzen Takata uh, fire station. So kindly Yamato-san uh, could deliver so our staffs to uh, Rikuzen Takata people. And then uh, they make, uh, uh, you can see their bathroom, uh, very nice. And, and then so affected people uh, can take a bath. And then, uh, so every uh, uh, Amazon customer uh, realized uh, wish list, and then uh, 
many customers uh, in Tohoku area are uh, uh, created the uh, wish list. Uh, at the peak, uh, more than 7,000 uh, locations uh, we have a wish list, including uh, local government. And our uh, last message is the, uh, uh, the important thing is the uh, uh, building uh, mutual uh, trust uh, between our customers and uh, uh, affected people is very important. So uh, because the, uh, uh, we would like to avoid uh, phishing uh, to using our, 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 our wish list, uh, so uh, we make a, a thank you message page. And this is the, uh, uh, from uh, each evacuation center or schools. Uh, 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 and then, so they post a message with a photo. And then, so customers uh, realize uh, uh, they use uh, the staffs so uh, uh, for uh, children or affected people. So and then so they uh, customers are repeatedly uh, to uh, purchase or help uh, items to the uh, the same uh, location evacuation center. So that is a very interesting uh, story. I can tell. Thank you. Thank you, Watanabe-san. It's very impressive to see that uh, wish of the materials for the people who are desperately needs in the areas hit by disasters. But also there's a strong wish, people really want to help. That's why after one minute, all the 100 items were purchased by the people who want to help. Then Yamato Unyu-san, Yamato Transport really helped to move all the stuff to around in a very complex area. So it's very impressive. Thank you. So next I'd like to hear the story from Sam. Sure, thank you. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here today, and thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm going to talk today about spontaneous volunteering within young people post-natural disaster. I come from Christchurch in New Zealand, and we've had a series of over 10,500 earthquakes and aftershocks since September 2010. Mm -hmm. There were five main earthquakes that we've had, the first of which after I started a, a volunteer group through Facebook that involved mobilizing 2,500 students to go and shovel the liquefaction from the streets in Christchurch. The name the Student Volunteer Army came out of that, but it has no affiliation at all to the, the New Zealand Army or the military. We are very much a, a group of students who were focused on a one simple task of clearing liquefaction off the streets uh, in New Zealand. Throughout the five different earthquake cleanups, it's come a hub, become a hub for the coordination of any volunteering that didn't fit within the strict hierarchy of civil defense or of FEMA, or of the emergency management, and outside any traditional NGO, the Red Cross, Salvation Army, etc. This, everything the student army got involved in was the low-risk areas in the communities that everyday people, people helping people, and uh, coordinated by, um, through Facebook and through a hierarchy of area managers and event managers. There were three main areas in which we focused on. First of all, we'd have up to 1,800 students each day would go to a specific location within the town, would communicate on Facebook the night before that they had to turn up to the university or to, to the government building or to, to whichever area, and from there we'd direct them out to the suburbs of Christchurch to shovel the liquefaction and the silt in the areas that was most needed. And that worked very well for a start, but we came across the very difficult problem of the, we didn't know where the help was needed, and while we could quite easily put 1,000 or 2,000 students into certain areas of the city for a start, it became necessary to find the people who really needed help and those who were vulnerable but not in life-threatening situations. So we developed a software um, using the Yushahidi platform uh, through Facebook, or using Twitter, uh, email, and a call center, and we used mainstream media as the tool to advertise that there was a volunteer force uh, very large and willing to help do more or less anything. And it became known as the skill of being unskilled for all those people really under 30 or under 25 who certainly had no training whatsoever in disaster response, no training or a willingness to, or really any interest in being trained in disaster, but who were able to go and help be a good neighbor and help their people next door to them. Uh, so the, the student army really focused on that the whole time. And so when we'd have a request came in, a re the request would be put through a mobile management unit uh, onto, a, onto Google Maps, and we would send one carload of students to an individual household. They would then text back at the end of the day, and once they'd finished their, their, uh, their task, and we would text them back the next location to go. 
And so throughout the month of February, we had 500 cars, uh, up to 500 cars each day, going to individual addresses right around the city, shuffling the liquefaction and, uh, and building, uh, on the, building on the work of just offering support. In terms of the, the less major lessons learned from it, the, the biggest thing was that the, the willingness of people to respond and instantly wanting to help straight away after a disaster. In Christchurch, everyone wanted to do something to help, uh, but there was no avenue to volunteer. There was no avenue for anyone who wasn't trained in volunteering or not trained in disaster relief to be able to get involved in the community. And so we became the central platform for that just by having our name out there for the very start. And it was a very organic process, so there was no strict rules. We had a very strong relationship with the government and with the civil defense. Uh, and through that relationship, we built up trust to respond in different ways. So while we shoveled the silt for a start, we were also the only agent, one of the few agencies in Christchurch who was not only accepting money as the donation. So if somebody rang up and had 80,000 lunches from the North Island to send down to us, a container load of water bags coming from uh, our sister city in, in, from Kraski in Japan, uh, we would accept all the donations and then set up a team of people quite organically to go and deliver that and hand it around the city. Some of the key successes from the volunteer army was around having no budget and no resource constraint. Because we were more or less a group of students, we would use crowdsourcing on Facebook and on Twitter uh, wherever we needed something. We'd invite the information to come in and people would, 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 would post on Facebook that they needed their address to be cleaned up and somebody else would post on it quite automatically that they had, had seen it, or that it's verified that information, and that, then that information could be put onto our system for other people to use. And that was the model that was used largely in the final cleanup in December, where anyone could register that they needed help, and other people would log online and also see that that help was needed, and they would uh, instantly fill that, uh, fill that need. There was no intention to run the organization longer than the actual earthquake cleanup, so there was no sort of, there was, there was no, uh, there was no long-term goal. There was, we weren't trying to raise money to, 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 to pay salaries or to create long-term jobs. It was simply to fill the need in Christchurch. And while the need was very much focused on the vulnerable people, uh, who have been largely affected by the earthquake, the biggest impact has actually been on the mental health of the other side of the city which wasn't affected, who felt they needed to contribute but had no avenue to contribute. We're very lucky in New Zealand that we have a, a scheme through the government that whereby helping someone else, if you, an, an accident scheme, that means uh, there's no personal liability for, for if you damage someone's property, they cannot sue you. It, has to, it goes through the government and uh, the ACC scheme, which is very lucky to be able to take away the liability from the individual volunteers onto an organization, um, but there was no sort of, not the, the worries of health and safety. Um, or in privacy laws, uh, at the time, were, 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 were rumored to be relaxed, so we were able to share information quite easily with other groups. It also, and I was talking with some people last night uh, about this, that it attracted all the people who would offer their skills to emergency providers who often get in the way of, a, of the typical response in the, in the high, risk, high risk situations. So anyone who uh, would, would, may have, would normally go and, go and offer to volunteer but have no skills to offer, they would be all sent to us. And also we, would, uh, we delivered a lot of the chemical toilets, we delivered all the pamphlets and mentors, uh, and mentored a lot of the younger people in the city and now serve as a platform to involve young people in Christchurch and the way to get them engaged in the disaster as we move, move forward. So that's a bit about us. Thank you, Sam. It's very impressive to see the magnitude of the complexities to orchestrate and coordinate all the good wills of the peoples and also needs. Thank you. Thank you. So, Tanaka-san. Hey. Yeah. Uh, and my name is Tanaka from Yamato Transport, and everyone is presented in English, but um, I cannot do that to communicate in accuracy. Therefore, I would like to prefer speak in Japanese. And as touched upon in Amazon presentation, after March 11, on March 18, um, the Aomori Akita um, and the March 12, Iwate, Miyagi, and Fukushima, those Tohoku region, we have resumed our operation. And I will explain this later. On March 23rd, um, the, we became, a, a, as a responder, to s deliver the relief items to those regions. 
And with working together with Amazon through the co collaboration of the communication of the information on April 7, we have established this. And for myself, so this is a part of BCP business continuity plan, such as wide area, uh, the disaster plan, and that's a part of my responsibilities. Aside from the technology, I would like to talk about the Yamato transport, the last mile effort. So how we worked in this disaster relief, on March 23rd, um, we have uh, started the responder delivering the relief items there and 200 trucks, 500 staffs assigned and in total 4,187 4, trucks and 14,286 people are assigned. That was the action one. And the action two, maybe many of you already knew, last year's um, if you make a donation, 10 EM per delivery, and then through that we have contributed donation of total 14.2 billion yen. Action three, each single employee do the company-wide campaign. The biggest one is to do the volunteer activities in disaster-stricken area. And the second one is Bellmark. This is a Japan unique program. For example, at schools, maybe when you are elementary students, you have been involved in this Bellmark activity, collecting Bellmark and buy necessary items to your schools. And we have supported this effort. And another thing is this is uh, the power saving effort. So we just uh, put put the water to save the energy. And this is the um, the relief uh, delivery situation, the picture. So just like this, we have delivered items to disaster stricken area. So the Amazons, um, the, what have explained was uh, something related to this. This is one of the signs of reconstruction and I think this was widely covered by the media. This is a very famous picture. And the Yamato truck ran in the middle of the wreck. So the uh, there's uh, the Yamato or the transport delivers relief items to the disaster-stricken area so that people will be able to have a hope toward the future. This is a symbol of those hope. And this is another truck running in the... Um, the Delibus. And this is a package of the relief items, and many of them have message written on the board. I, if I introduce uh, the, every one of them, I think I will start crying, so let me skip this. So like this, uh, the people are communicating their messages to the disaster-stricken area. This is a uh, newspaper advertisement. So in 10 yen donation per deliver, we put some hope and we posted this as a newspaper announcement. Sorry for busy slides to read. And 14.2 billion yen donation, one of the examples here, through that subsidiary, um, the, through that the donation, we will like the other uh, disaster stricken areas companies to restart their businesses so to to recharge themselves or re-energize themselves so it's better to resume the operation immediately is very important that's where we put that some of the donation so this is a nursing care center that will be rebuilt on the highland hill and the uh, the government did not fund for this, so we use some of our donation to set up nursing care in the hill. So what I would like to mention is that the company is conducting various efforts, as you can see from the presentation, but what I really want to highlight today is from March 13th, uh, the Yamatos prepared relief items when we delivered that to the evacuation centers People there voluntarily start an action to distribute those relief items to other people who have been struggling. We noticed it afterwards. So 
lastly, Yamato's transportation company's DNA, that is customer first, service first. So we would like to become a company who is deeply rooted in the local community, and that DNA is deeply rooted among our employees so they can make their own decision and then do whatever they can at that time. So I really appreciate all the efforts of our employees and I would like them to be proud of being our company to do the various activities in the future. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I got I got fit to so maybe let me start asking the question to Sam. And uh, it's impressive to coordinate so many large number of people, but also situation is so chaotic. Email, Twitter, Facebook is great, sending a piece of the message, yeah. but how do you really coordinate, bring some structure, prioritizations, orchestration, may require a lot of the work. So if you can tell me how you could really develop the platform, develop all the experiences in a very chaotic world, sure. but also very limited, severe limitation of current technology. Absolutely. So I guess one of the most the most interesting things that we use the I guess the, the the tools in our pockets, as we like to call the Facebook, the Twitter, the Gmail, the Google yeah. Maps, that was all used as the communication outwards. Yes, communication. That, that we'd send out and get people to turn up. In yeah. terms of the actual coordination, it was done in a very sort of traditional military style. Oh. That one thousand people would turn up. You would put them in. We'd put them in quite separate teams. I see. And have bus individual bus loads go to individual locations. I see. Or individual car I loads. See. So a, a very organic structure. We, we put a lot of trust into individual team leaders, and it relied on their responsibility and their common sense to do what was right. I see. And that was where the most interesting friction happened within authorities and with the government, uh, with, with government departments, mm -hmm. that, uh, that we had that 100% trust in individuals to manage the mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. as they felt most effective, as they, as they felt yeah, necessary yeah. to do. And that was out of necessity, as we didn't have any management structures or ability mm -hmm. or experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were, we were, we were a group of 23, 25-year-old mm -hmm. kids. And, uh, <laughs> um, and so it was very much, you, you, you do whatever we could in the situation. I see. It's very interesting to see that the necessity of the structure, process, and the controls, more organizational skill set. So you collaborate also with FEMA? Uh, no, so no. the FEMA's equivalent, oh, sorry, FEMA's equivalent in New Zealand is called civil defense. Oh, and yes, sorry, sorry we oh. um, yeah, have a very strong, okay. very strong relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And the model that we uh, have worked to now is that if there's a, um, another large earthquake in Christchurch, sometimes we have what is called a scrum team. Mm -hmm. Over people, there's some government representatives, there's mm -hmm. civil defense representatives, mm -hmm. representatives of the major NGOs and volunteer networks, and events coordinators from the local government. I see. And we, combined together instantly to decide how we should respond mm -hmm. and what volunteer response is going to be necessary. I see. And that is then the, the, the unit would say, okay, okay, we need probably a thousand volunteers to turn up here yes. on tomorrow, mm -hmm. and we would then coordinate them to I go see. out to the suburbs. Thank you. So, Watanabe san, uh, turning uh, e-commerce systems, giving the gift to Christmas weddings into such a critical uh, crisis response it's quite impressive, but there was a lot of the stories. You didn't talk so much, but uh, yeah, if you can tell a bit more story about what kind of the things you found most important to share among us. Yes, um, uh, in last March, uh, at the first, uh, I approached the, uh, a prefecture government uh, uh -huh. to use a wish list mm -hmm. uh, because the, uh, I think uh, they could uh, handle all evacuation center in the prefecture. I see. But uh, it didn't work, mm -hmm. actually, uh, because the, uh, they uh, are difficult uh, to handle uh, to find out uh, what is uh, necessary stuff yes, yes. Uh, for affected people mm -hmm. in each evacuation center. So uh, that's why I changed uh, my approach mm -hmm. and uh, to the uh, bottom up. I see. Not top down. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, and, and 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 then, so I try to find out uh, uh, reliable information in uh, Twitter or uh, some uh, blog sphere field. Uh, so, and then, so I could uh, find out uh, the Rikuzen uh, Takada case uh, by helping uh, to important my friends. You actually called. Yeah, <laughs> that's impressive. So, Tarabasa. Watanabe-san, 
talked about the evacuation centers. Evacuation center is a hub, but the, to deliver the stuff, the real goodwill to the people, individuals who lost house, also there's no map, seems a real big challenge. So in telecommunication, we often call it the last one mile, for example, so all the optical fibers, but in the end, how to deliver the bits to the real house. So how Yamato team conquered this complex problem of the one last miles in the situation you have no like a map. Of course, there's a Google Maps or Google Earth, but uh, I'm curious. There are a lot of the complexities. Also, you have to solve the problems on the fly, on the road. Well, when I look back, the most difficult thing was that we don't know that who stay at which shelters. And uh, even at the uh, identification or evacuation list, um, the logistics are not related to the really the location of the people. So if we can have one concentrated data that can be shared that was effective, but we couldn't do it. We had to use our own data. That was the most difficult point. And as for the last one mile, there's no houses. So you can't deliver goods to the gone houses. So uh, in case of uh, Amazon, that we know that's where to uh, ship, but some of the goods were uh, addressed to the older uh, conventional address. And it was the most difficult because house was gone. We don't know where to deliver. So, so sometimes you can't really see the house at all, right? So. We really have to have the one integrated centric uh, data uh, across the borders of the companies and also authorities. We optimize the entire system to maximize the utilization. But in a very chaotic situation, you have very incomplete fragments of information. You have to also achieve the optimal in the local areas, but also you may get the information while you're driving. So it's very impressive how to really keep repairing extending the plan uh, on the fly. So that's some, something very impressive. Yeah, would you like to say? It's just picking up on that, yeah. on that point there that you made around struggling to locate the houses to go to, yeah. particularly those who are most in need. The fundamental flaw in our system for a start in, in September in the first earthquake cleanup was that the, the, those who really needed the help couldn't use the technology that we were using. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that became, uh, and a lot of the, the other problem within the civil defense was that they said that there was no jobs for volunteers. And so we used large scales, large numbers of people just to sweep and door knock an entire city uh -huh. to locate the jobs that for other people to do. And so to locate areas to allocate other resources. Great. Thank you, Sam. And to Tanaka -san. So now I'd like to uh, open this discussion to the floor. We have exactly seven minutes. So who wants to come first? Please tell us your name and also from where you are. Yeah, the lady over there, second line, yeah. Hello, um, my name is Shoko Miyagawa from Keio University. And, and actually, I utilize the uh, Amazon wish list as an uh, information volunteer. Uh, you, maybe you remember. Uh, but um, and I have a question for uh, Watanabe-san. And uh, I, I really impressed that you mentioned that the, uh, uh, the ev uh, evacuation center or uh, um, a relief material center in each uh, local government uh, very severe uh, to making uh, matching uh, the uh, needs and the uh, supply. At, um, and, and you mentioned you gave up that and then uh, go to the uh, grassroots uh, activities. But I, I believe that you have uh, potential to support the uh, each cent uh, center of the uh, relief materials in a, a disaster area uh, because uh, Amazon is the uh, world's biggest uh, retail sales company. So um, I, I, I want to ask you and, and you have uh, your your company have any uh, whether your co company have any vision to support. Uh, such uh, kind of uh, needs and uh, supply matching uh, for the next big disaster? Yeah, uh, so 
our company's uh, mission is the, uh, we, are, we should be uh, our most uh, customer-centric company in the world. So uh, uh, we uh, really uh, want to help uh, each people in affected area at that time. And um, I have a very interesting story. So this is uh, the Sendai City case. Uh, Sendai City officials uh, said to me they would like to uh, make a wish list uh, for uh, a evacuation center in Sendai uh, because uh, they need uh, black uh, plastic bags uh, for sanitary goods. Uh, but if they uh, post uh, such information uh, in their uh, website homepage, so uh, very uh, tons of uh, boxes uh, including uh, black, black plastic bags will arrive at uh, evacuation centers. So that is very hard for them uh, to organize or stock uh, the, uh, the tons of uh, uh, boxes. So that's why they, they, con they, should, they would like to control uh, the number of uh, necessity of uh, amount uh, of uh, black plastic bags. So, so that's why they would like to uh, 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 make a wish list. So in this story, so uh, through the wish list, uh, we can connect uh, exact needs uh, and uh, uh, so uh, customers' uh, demands uh, for supporting uh, affected people. So, so that's why uh, we conduct and wish list program uh, for the uh, top of disaster. And also, uh, we are discussing in the company uh, we, how we, uh, should we uh, uh, develop uh, this program uh, for the future uh, so, uh, disasters uh, in Japan or the, or the other countries. So, okay. First of all, Yamato-san, Tadaka-san, thank This question is for, actually, for Amazon. And I understand that we've worked together, my name is Charles McJillan with Second Harvest Japan, and how you dealt with the idea or the problem or the challenge of gyodose. Hmm? Gyodose. Uh, okay. uh, fairness, fairness. Making sure that everybody yeah. got something equally. Yeah, yeah. And how did you make that decision, who got what and, and what not? I'd just be interested in how you dealt with that issue. Yeah, that's a very good question. So. Uh, uh, I, as I mentioned before, uh, the uh, prefecture government uh, 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 hesitated to use the uh, wish list uh, at the first stage. Uh, the the uh, one of the reason is the uh, they uh, uh, stress the uh, uh, equality uh, for the uh, evacuation center. Uh, if are uh, 300 people uh, in the evacuation center, so they need uh, staffs. Uh, 300 staffs uh, for uh, the evacuation center. But uh, usually, uh, so supporting goods uh, is not, uh, the, the, the number of supporting goods is not exact uh, of a uh, number of affected people. It's a usual case, right? So, uh, and, and the, so, so the, that's why so the government uh, so emphasis the uh, equality uh, of the evacuation center. Mm -hmm. So uh, they uh, hesitate to use the wish list. But uh, but we uh, I thought uh, the equality um, we at that time uh, I I should emphasize the uh, so uh, uh, emergency. Uh, more than uh, equality at that time. So that's why uh, I changed the, uh, uh, my approach to the grassroots approach. Next question. Here and then. Please, please tell us your name and from where you are. Oh. Uh, I'm a student from Tohoku University. My name is Takumi Kato and I would like to re I would like really thank uh, for the great uh, discussion. And I really personally thank Amazon Wishlist because that's a service that actually saved my, one of my friends. And uh, you have mentioned that uh, Wishlist is a real uh, direct connection of needs and people. And I, I saw that not only the information record, but that was the record of experience 
And, also, and uh, passing experience on to the next generation is really crucial, I think. And as you mentioned, future, do you have any project or effort to pass the experience of actual victims to the next generation or other people? Do you have that kind of project or vision about that? So experience for the next generation? I mean, the, the by experience, I meant that there was a lot of information, how many houses lost in that area or something. But there's really few information about how, what people needed, actually needed, and where and when. And that information was really crucial, and that's how I call it experience. And I think it's really needed to pass it on to some other people. Do you have, ex uh, do you have that kind of vision or? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, uh, explain the, uh, the uh, famous volunteer groups, uh, Fumbaro Higashi Nihon project. Uh -huh. uh, so very, very huge uh, volunteer groups uh, who are Tohoku disaster area. So they. Uh, research, so uh, which items uh, is needed uh, in each in houses, uh, not evacuation center. So uh, they uh, gather uh, such kind of information uh, with uh, Google Docs, and uh, they communicate with Facebooks, and uh, uh, very many uh, volunteer groups uh, in Japan, uh, they uh, make a uh, wish list for each houses. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a very uh, interesting story, and uh, uh, we are very helped uh, by the, such kind of activity uh, from the uh, volunteer groups. Thank you very much for the information. I think there's a really interesting, just very quickly, relationship there with so the Amazon that's been just so successful with product donations yeah. and, and people donating specific things that are needs. Mm -hmm. uh, in Christchurch, Trade Me, which is a, a, a self-auctioning uh, website, um, did a similar thing, uh -huh. except it was with human resources. So people could register what if they needed a plumber or they needed an electrician or they needed mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. such and such, but maybe they couldn't afford that, and somebody would then mm -hmm. donate their time in a physical capacity to go to go and volunteer to do it. I think I that's a, another space that is, is hugely underexplored of that sp skilled volunteer okay. resource allocation, and particularly within the student communities. The students, you can you can tap into them and, and use, as we've seen today, specific mm -hmm. mapping skills or asset planning or or, uh, or legal skills as a base level to support other NGOs. Mm -hmm. And in a disaster, a student community mm -hmm. is often a community that is very underutilized. They're not the ones who necessarily want to uh -huh. jump in and help uh -huh. straight away, but uh -huh. you can tap into them quite easily easily and have a huge success rate from that. That's very important. Beyond the goods or products, mm. you can offer your skill, experience, time, and energy, which could be also put in this market. Mm. Good. So last question or comments from uh, Jim Murai. Yeah, Jim Murai, Cairo University. Um, yeah, Sam, you were sitting on the people's side, and then the two gentlemen beside the uh, uh, supply side. And then, you know, so my question is uh, if um, the company A is uh, providing a good things to uh, some, and, uh, you know, then uh, if there is, there is also a company B doing the similar thing, your competitors, right, mm -hmm. as a business, and always uh, for Chronicle and uh, then, you know, they, Yamato, they have a competitor as well. Uh, I mean, competitor in the general sense. And uh, when the disaster time, is there any way to uh, coordinate That's among the, uh, those uh, professional service providers? And uh, some also, I'd like to hear from you about that kind of, uh, uh, you know, the kind of urgent coordination among the co competitor in general. Is there any way? So, the world is ideal, then there should be the system. However, um, the company contributing to the society, which also means that try to improve the images of the corporation so that um, we can't, or it's very difficult for us at this moment to have the comprehensive view. Um, companies are competing to be the first one to uh, contribute. Ultimately, the Japanese delivery business would be it should be one that will be the most effective. But even for the telecommunication career or others, in the private sector, we always have competition. So in case of emergency, um, what do we do about this competition? We really have to have some rules. 
Yeah, I think it's very uh, interesting uh, uh, advice, but it's very challenging. But uh, ideally, uh, yes. we should coordinate uh, with the other private company. And also, uh, we are trying to uh, coordinate with the government itself. Uh, because the, uh, so during my, our, uh, our program, uh, some Amazon customers said, uh, why don't Amazon uh, uh, carry uh, the uh, uh, stocks? Uh -huh. Huge stocks uh -huh. uh, in some area. I see. Uh, it's it's government uh, owned uh, uh, stuffs. Mm -hmm. uh, so but we, we we couldn't uh, touch on that. I see. But, but, but yeah, so the from the customer yeah. viewpoint, yeah. or affected yeah. people viewpoint. So why don't you uh, so coordinate yes. with the government activity? Yeah. I think, of course, in an ideal world, that's exactly what should happen. We should all coordinate together. But I think the reality is, in any disaster, it's just not going to happen. Um, to be frank, I think it's going to be very difficult to try and implement. But what I think we can do is make sure that the allocation of it is, is somehow recorded and mapped, and we can judge how, which area has got the most, which company is providing the most in which area, and how can we best move through that. And so to relate back to Christchurch, the exact thing happened with certain companies providing so much to a lot of the people who were seen as the vulnerable, but a lot of the people in the neighboring districts who were as equally as vulnerable, but didn't end up in the mainstream media, uh, were, were not supported as such. If there's some sort of ability to record and map where, where that resource is going, what sort of aid is going towards these areas, and to be able to then use that to better inform the, uh, the, the agencies um, and through, through maybe a centralized system that's not a government system, but a, a, but a partnered system, um, I think there'd be some real strength in, in something like that. And certainly it would be, it would be, it would be terrific to have that, uh, that coordination to happen. Great. So I think uh, the term wish list was mentioned by many people, we should start the list of the things I need, I want. I need a medicine, I need a water because of troubles. But also there are another huge strong wish, I want to help, I want to do something. So I think how to really combine, connect all the great wish or good will, warm wills to the real needs seems so important. So hope in futures all the lessons and experience can really help to connect this, these two different type of the wish list to, to the wish mesh or wish network. Thank you very much for your participation and also great part speaker. Thank you.